The Miami Heat have lost their first game post All-Star break, as well as their first loss in the last six games. Obviously, it came to none other than the world champion Denver Nuggets. I'll break down this recap on this episode of Heat Digest, where we create daily Miami content. So if that interests you, subscribe to the channel, as 88% of you guys currently watching are not subscribed. We appreciate all your support. Now let's break down this crazy game between the Miami Heat in the Denver Nuggets. It was the first meeting between these two teams this season. It was the first time they have met since last year in the NBA playoffs, in the NBA championship, where these two teams met. The Denver Nuggets did beat the Miami Heat in five games. But again, let's focus on tonight's game as it was hectic, to say the least. A back and forth game. Really, it seemed like the Miami Heat didn't have a chance when this game initially started. The first quarter ended 36-20 to in favor of the Denver Nuggets. And it wasn't the fact that the Miami Heat were flat out terrible. Don't get me wrong. They were not good in this first quarter. They weren't good offensively. They weren't good defensively. The energy wasn't as high as it was later in the second, third, and fourth quarter for the Miami Heat. And it showed as the Denver Nuggets came out and they punched us square in the mouth twice. They really did. And they were led by three players in the first quarter. Michael Porter Jr., who had nine points seemed like everything he was putting up wasn't going to miss as well as KCP had three threes alone in the first quarter by himself as well as Aaron Gordon Aaron Gordon didn't his stat line won't wow you but once again he set the tone offensively as well as MPJ and KCP for the Denver Nuggets especially in the first quarter and from that point forward it seemed like the Denver Nuggets were really going to dominate this game that was not the case now Despite Denver not really missing in the first quarter, Miami's defense was not great either, as well as their offense, as it was stagnant, it was inconsistent, it was it was stalling out here and there, and it resulted in bad basketball for a period of time. Then the second quarter started, and things were much better for the Miami Heat due to the fact that the energy seemed a hell of a lot higher, especially on the defensive end. Things were getting going. We were able to crash on defenders. This was a huge key for the Miami Heat tonight. Every time it felt like Jokic, Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., any of these guys for Denver touched the ball next to the rim on, on a block in the paint, and if their back was to the basket, there was a second or even third defender crashing down on these offensive players for the Denver Nuggets, causing steals, causing strips, runouts for the Miami Heat, which really did help the offense as not only were we able to run in transition, but we were able to really just push the pace of play. Not only were we trying to score in transition, but pushing the ball down the floor, getting into a half-court offense, and getting the things going, and getting a shot up in the first few seconds of the shot clock. And no, before you think these are bad shots, it was rushed offense. They were getting into sets, Miami was, off of these turnovers, off of these steals from Denver. And But despite that, they were still running real plays, getting up good shots, it was just at a much, much faster pace. And I think that was all strategy as they want to make people like Jokic and Aaron Gordon really exert a bunch of energy, not only on their offensive end as they are trying to score the basketball every time down the floor, but make them defend. Not only make them defend, but make them move around, keep everyone moving laterally as well as up and down the floor due to the fact that shots are always constantly going up and there's always a long game of basketball being played, especially with the Miami Heat do end up playing back, uh, defense 94 feet, which is always a great sign because that means the energy is high. And when we're playing high energy defense, it results in us playing good basketball. Now, Tyler Hero did not play tonight. Kevin Love, Josh Richardson both did not play tonight. We missed both Kevin Love and Tyler Hero extensively tonight. Jovic did get the start tonight in the replacement of Hero. He did shoot 3 of 8 from the field, 7.6 rebounds and assist, 2 steals. He was one of five starters to have a steal tonight. Duncan Robinson, another good defensive night from Duncan Robinson. I want to highlight the fact that he did not rely on the three-point shot tonight. I felt like he was taking way more layups than really normal. I feel like I've highlighted this a bunch of times, especially as of late. But tonight seemed like much more of an outlier. If we look at his shots, he did shoot six threes. He made two of them. He shot nine times. He There was three shots he took out, or inside the three-point line, and it, he seemed very comfortable, and not just comfortable. He seemed extremely willing to take these shots. Five of nine for Duncan Robinson from the field, two of six from three, 12 points, three rebounds, three assists, three steals with a plus-minus of plus seven. Jimmy Butler, seven of 17, a bit more aggressive tonight, not as high of, as efficiency. Seven of 17, one of four from the three-point line, and again, 
I don't know what it is with Jimmy Butler. This man can shoot a higher percentage from the field certain nights than he does from the free throw line. Tonight, he shot 6 of 9 from the free throw line. 21 points, 7 boards, 3 assists, and a steal. Plus minus of 0. Kind of funny that you see that stat. Not all the time that you do see that. Bam Adebayo, 8 of 18. Was struggling with his shot early. Did get things going. Was a bit more aggressive, especially down the stretch of this game. He added 22 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal. He was flirting with fouling out as he did have five fouls. For Terry Rozier, this was a big game, but I have some question marks as well as you guys probably do as well. He had four air balls tonight. All of them came on three-point shots. They, uh, I feel like all of them were down the stretch of the fourth quarter. Obviously, they were not. There was, I believe, two of them in the first half. But again, Terry Rozier, one of eight from the three-point line, including four air balls. Four air balls. I'm not making that up. He had four air balls tonight, including one down the stretch of the game when it was a very close game for the Miami Heat. We had a chance to really pull this game extremely close and really make an effort to win this game. Nonetheless, Rozier added 19, five rebounds, four assists, a steal, plus minus of minus five. He did make all six of his free throw as free throws as well as Bam Adebayo did. Did not mention that, but he did shoot six of 15 from the field. Terry Rozier did. Just, I don't understand. It felt like when he was stepping inside the three-point line, which he did a few times tonight, as he made five shots inside the three-point line, he was he made a bank shot, rolling or not rolling right, but dribbling in right. It was a dribble pull-up. He made it, banking it off the glass. It was a great-looking shot. He wasn't hesitating on these mid-range jump shots. He made another jump shot just following that possession after the bank shot. This is in the fourth quarter. He made a pull-up jump shot on... The left wing, if you will, or the left corner, left mid-range corner, and he seemed like he was in a flip, uh, in a excuse me, in a flow. It seemed like he was really getting to his shot, really heating up, if you will, and then it resulted in him taking a three-point shot. Granted, he was open, but again, he was one of seven from the three-point line going into that shot, and it did not result in anything that good. As he airballed once again, not great for the Miami Heat. I think it has something to do with. The leg injury he was dealing with. Obviously, he's coming back from that knee sprain. This is his second game back. I just don't understand why he continued to force the shot. If he wasn't getting elevation in that shot throughout the whole entire game, then you get to the fourth quarter. Everyone's fatigued, especially you've been playing 33 minutes, and you put up another air ball. Not great for the Miami Heat, especially down the stretch in such a close game. Caleb Martin, the last guy I'm going to highlight, as well as Haquez. Caleb Martin, 5 of 10 from the, uh, the field, 2 of 3 from the... Th uh, three-point line, 13, nine rebounds, and an assist. And then finally, Jaime Jaquez only went one of five, making his one shot, including one of two free throws. He did miss his only three, but his defense, he had two steals, and it felt like a hell of a lot more than that as he was everywhere, crashing on players in the in the paint with their back against the basket. He did add five assists and four rebounds, really playing his role, not relied on on the offensive end. Don't get me wrong, he is taking the shots. But it doesn't never it never feels like whenever he crosses half court he is looking to score the basketball, especially tonight. And he did a great job facilitating as well as just being an all around defender tonight. So that's great to see. But again, not going to get the job done for the Miami Heat. Surprisingly, we won the rebounding battle against a team in Denver who has a substantial advantage with size and just rebounding overall. During the finals last year, they beat us in five games on the rebounding battle by 45 or six rebounds. Not good. You'll never beat a team, especially if you're getting beat that badly on the rebounding side of things. Overall, a very, very close game. And if you watched it, it didn't seem like, for stretches, it seemed like Denver was going to blow the Miami Heat out. And then there was times when Denver was flat and the Miami Heat just looked like a team that no one wanted to play. And now, now things are interesting. With this win, we would have been the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. And with a loss, we are now the eighth seed. We are half game back from Indiana, Orlando, Philadelphia. And we are a game and a half back from the New York Knicks who are in the fourth seed. It, the Eastern Conference, look at this. Look at this race. Two and three are eight games back from the one seed. Then four, the fourth seed, New York Knicks, are 12 game back. 12 games back, and then 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all 13 games back, excluding the Miami Heat, or another half game back. Just a, a ridiculous race out east, another crazy race out west, as those standings are just as chaotic as the ones in the east. But again, the Miami Heat with this loss, it, 
it, we were on a roll, winning nine of our last 11 games. The last 11 games, we were holding teams under their scoring margin, and that resulted in nine wins out of the last 11. Now, again, our only three losses in our last 12 games are to the Boston Celtics, the Los Angeles Clippers, and now the Denver Nuggets. Here are our next four games. We're at home against the Utah Jazz and the Detroit Pistons. These are two extremely winnable games that we should go home and dominate for to get back on the right track before going back on the road to play two great teams out west in the Dallas Mavericks and the Oklahoma City Thunder. What we learned from this game, and I'm kind, I'm almost speechless because it, the, at points, it, like I said, that first quarter, we shouldn't have had a chance after that first quarter. We opened up the second quarter with a lot of defense. We made the game close, very competitive, back and forth. Going into halftime, the third quarter, once, once again, our energy was very high. We pulled the game within two. My, Denver goes on a 18-7 run, and the game feels like it's out of reach once again. Then the fourth quarter starts. And Denver's doing their thing. They go flat. The Miami Heat hit a few threes. Caleb Martin hits a great three. Terry Rozier, like I said, hits two mid-range jump shots before airballing that three-point shot when we're down four. Just such a chaotic game to watch as a Miami Heat fan as we felt like we were oh so close and we just couldn't get it done. I can't wait to see these next two games as we're hosting Utah and Detroit. These are two games where we should slaughter these two teams no matter whether or not we have six guys playing or not because of injuries suspensions whatever it may be but again this eastern conference race is going to be an absolute rat race and we need to win more games than we lose obviously that's always the goal but again when the when it looks like this we need more wins especially when we're playing teams such as utah and detroit we have to win the free ones especially when we're at home let me know down in the comments what you guys thought about this version of the Miami Heat. It was our 31st lineup of the season. We're only second place behind the, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies this year in the amount of lineups, total lineups that we've used. An absolute KDOT game. Thanks for watching this uh, episode of Heat Digest. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.